What's going on everyone? It's Justin here and this is the most I've lifted in a while but today I've got a very exciting unboxing of the brand new Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra processor as well as the new Apple Studio display. So in this video we're going to go ahead and unbox each one, show you guys some of the different specs and configurations as well as the ones that we have and then go ahead and set it up and talk about whether or not the display is worth it, the combination and the workflow. For anyone who demands power, I'm sure this is a computer that you're wondering a lot about because with the options coming in the M1 Max, which is already very powerful, as well as the M1 Ultra, which essentially is two M1 Maxes merged together, it not only brings you an extremely powerful desktop computer option today in conjunction with a brand new studio display, but it also like makes me very excited for the future of the professional workflow overall. As always, if you guys like to see the earliest Apple coverage on this channel, just go ahead and subscribe drop a thumbs up and leave a comment down below with any questions that you have because I have a ton of videos planned for the Mac Studio, a review talking about like the weekend life and how it integrates with my workflow specifically as a Mac Pro user and as someone who edits about 100 videos a year, generally recording and editing in about a four to 7K resolution. But what's most exciting here is just like in a relatively small like lunchbox looking form factor uh, that you could actually take around with you, the amount of power that this is able to promise and what Apple talked about in comparison throughout the event is this can essentially replace their like flagship Mac Pro that costs significantly more money and it's like literally I would say 12 to 14 times larger than this Mac Studio with its unified memory and just the amount of bandwidth that it has from a graphics processing, general processing and pure power perspective. You can see right here that there's that Mac Studio text. So just like opening up the box and taking a look at what is included, I just really like the way this like box sort of clamshells. And to be honest, like when I first opened it, it is definitely a bit heavier than I expected. Um, but being a desktop computer, obviously that doesn't matter very much. But I do also feel like at the size for like professional workflows, it is something that is very portable. You can take it in this like box right here and the amount of power that you're able to have in your on the go workflow is unparalleled paralleled. So as we continue to open up the box, it looks like the Mac Mini from the top. You have your glossy black logo and the aluminum like unibody structure is fundamentally the same. But in terms of the internals, when it comes to the thermal design and the fan setup, it is quite different just because there's a lot more power that is pushing through. And I think the most interesting thing from like a reviewer's standpoint is to see how it handles the thermals and how that translates to the performance being a desktop computer with Apple's very own chip. Aside from the computer itself, you're going to find the power cable and it is like the black braided cable that you're also gonna find on the studio display and also that you've seen on the Mac Pro. The model that we have right here is the M1 Ultra processor with a 20 core CPU, 64 core GPU, as well as 128 gigs of unified memory paired with two terabytes of storage and you can actually spec it all the way up to eight terabytes internally. So taking a look at the design here, you have your Apple logo on the top, of course, the sharp edges, and you have your SD card slot on the front here, as well as a few different ports, which is always nice to have. And I'm definitely someone who is used to having like a Thunderbolt dock in addition to everything else, but just having a few directly embedded in the computer is always uh, preferred. And over on the back here, as we discussed, there is your Thunderbolt ports, the ethernet, your power cable in the middle, two USB-A ports, which is still like good to have for certain like USB adapters for accessories, which I still use. And there is also your HDMI. So talking about like the actual design here, even though it does seem very simple, the fan setup is a dual fan setup. It pulls the cool air from the bottom vents here. You can see it kind of raises it up and it takes it all in, rotates it on the two fans and it pushes out the hot air through the vents on the back. There were some like initial like rumors that it could be a computer that has like the Mac Pro design where you kind of have like that cheese grater throughout. And that would have been like one where like fundamentally it would ventilate very well, but I'm very interested to turn this on, go ahead and test it and see just how it handles the overall thermals on a relatively heavy load. But the capability of this M1 chip is just so high that even with a professional workflow, I don't know if we'd be able to really push it to its limit. So when it comes to the chipset options, as I mentioned, this comes in an M1 Max as well as an M1 Ultra option. And the starting price is $2,000 for the M1 Max. From my experiences with the M1 Max on the MacBook Pro 14 inch, not the 16 inch, it 
it was already absolutely incredible. On my recent trip, I had to grade over 600 pieces of 4K footage in DaVinci Resolve, and the exporting process was very, very smooth. And a lot of what Apple talked about in the event is how this Mac Studio is actually faster than their very own Mac Pro, which came out quite a while ago, but it did cost a lot of money, it's very, very large, and that they're able to beat that performance in a form factor like this just because it is so well optimized, but also just the amount of raw power inside. If you go with the base model of the M1 Max, it is two and a half times faster in CPU performance than the fastest iMac, 50% faster CPU than the Mac Pro, 3.4 times faster GPU than the fastest iMac, and 3.4 times faster than the Mac Pro, with up to 64 gigabytes of unified memory. On the side of the M1 Ultra though, it is 3.8 times faster in CPU performance than the fastest iMac. And in terms of GPU, it is four and a half times faster. But what is crazy is the 128 gigabytes of unified memory. That M1 Ultra model with the Ultra Fusion technology gives you a 20 core CPU with 16 high performance cores, as well as four efficiency cores, as well as a 64 core GPU that is eight times faster than the original M1. Apple also mentions that this can power up to five displays, which four of them being like the XDR display in a 6K resolution, as well as like an OLED TV. You can also run like 16 streams of like ProRes 422 and 8K. Those are all just numbers, but let's go ahead and set it up and let you know like my initial impressions of it from running tasks that I would personally do on an everyday basis, which is more so focused towards video editing. And as an owner of the Mac Pro over the past few years, what my perspective is from a performance standpoint compared to that. So before we move on, I want to give a huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, Evernote, which is going to be one of the first apps that we install on the brand new Mac Studio. It's something that the entire team uses, as well as myself, for many different things such as pitches, video ideas, and scripts, as well as like email decks, meeting notes. The whole team is synced with it, and I just love the way that it stays nicely organized and formatted and is a crucial part of our overall workflow. The best part about it is I can start my day knowing what's a priority. The home page organizes everything from important notes to my schedule to all the tasks assigned and we're able to check off our to-do list with tasks complete with due dates reminders links and the ability to assign to others I've actually been using Evernote since like university and I would be switching between like my class notes as well as video notes and just continue typing away. But I just love how it is easy to format and also able to highlight certain areas to know which different cues within the video that I have to mention. As someone who has never personally used handwritten notebooks, the reason why I like Evernote is that it's very well organized like one, but it makes it very easy to search and find different notes and shortcuts at the same time. You can also use like tags and notebooks to separate different aspects of your personal life and your business. So in our case, we have a section for videos, we have another section for pitches, another one for emails, and also for meetings, just so we can back reference each thing and have a bit of like a company archive overall, and also be able to update the notes at any given time. If you guys wanna go ahead and download Evernote for yourself, I'm gonna drop a link down below, and a huge thanks to them once again for sponsoring this video. So at the end of the day, what amount of power makes the most sense for you? I would say at the price of $2,000, spending that extra $200 does make a lot of sense to be able to get the most power out of the M1 Max configuration. That is going to be more than enough for a lot of people out there. And even on like the MacBook 14 inch, which is slightly lower in terms of performance compared to the M1 Max 16 inch due to thermals, I was already very impressed. And with the workflow that we're using right now of 4K, 6K and 7K video, I wasn't really able to make it tire out. But if you're looking for that real like desktop performance power to potentially replace your Mac Pro, then that is when the M1 Ultra comes in. If you're running certain tasks and software applications that are optimized for M1 and are ones where the more power you throw at it, the faster performance you're going to get, and it isn't exactly finite, then you can definitely benefit from the M1 Ultra if you're looking to save time on things that would typically take like hours in some cases. The other aspect that you also have to worry about when it comes to price though is the amount of storage that you buy. It starts at 512 gigs and goes all the way up to eight terabytes at a price and it is very fast internal storage at 7.4 gigabytes per second. If you have like RAID drives and external drives, you've got four Thunderbolt ports on the back and that is going to be no problem at all. So that is definitely something to be considered, but typically if you're doing like photo and video, um, then I would say like two terabytes is gonna be more than enough in a lot of cases, maybe four terabytes, but 
I do feel like one terabyte is sort of the baseline that you want to buy because every time I've got the base option for storage, I definitely did regret it pretty quickly. From like a memory standpoint, I personally would also upgrade to 64 gigabytes of unified memory because that is something that you cannot expand or change down the road. Before we put together this entire new setup and boot it up for the first time though, let's go ahead and show you a quick unboxing experience of the Apple Studio Display. So this is something that a lot of people have waited for for quite a while now. It comes in at a price of $1,600 and has a few of the latest features in Apple's overall like camera and FaceTime camera lineup, including center stage, the 12 megapixel ultra wide cam sensor. And on top of that, it actually has an A13 processor built in for the image processing, the speaker system, which by the way, is a six speaker system, as well as a three mic array, the Dolby support and spatial audio. So essentially this is like the true like first party monitor that we've been waiting for for quite a while. And although it comes in at a bit of like a $300 premium compared to the closest option before, which is the LG 5K Ultrafine, I do feel like some of the features do justify that. And at the same time, it has a lot of the same great image qualities as the Apple Pro Display XDR that is significantly more expensive and definitely directed to a niche pro workflow. And I personally really enjoyed, but I do feel like this is like the total package that people have been waiting for. And although it might sound like I'm justifying the price, I do truly believe it is priced at a point where it kind of makes sense to some degree. Obviously also factoring in the premium when it comes to design and ecosystem. The display itself is almost like a thicker version of the iMac and it has like an all-in-one type of setup that follows the whole design scheme of the Apple's current lineup. And it's essentially like the perfect addition to a setup that has like the M1 Mac, a MacBook or a Mac Studio. It's a 5K display with a 27 inch size. And in terms of like what it has on paper, it's a 600 nit brightness with a P3 wide color gamut, a billion colors, true tone, and also a pretty good anti-reflective coating. On top of that though, some of the other areas that also give you that first party experience is the fact that it has an A13 chip inside. That runs the processes of like the imaging, but at the same time, it also gives you the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with support for center stage, which is a feature that I've really liked over on the iPads and also on the iMac. Some of the other additional features that I've had a chance to test out quickly is the three studio mic array with low noise floor. And at the same time, it also has a high fidelity six speaker system. The speaker system on the iMac Mac was already really good for its size, and I can tell you from early tests of playing a few songs, the sound quality on the speaker is really good to the point where if I didn't have space for like a speaker setup or I was just like on the go, I would be perfectly happy with listening to music, consuming content, and also doing like video editing and stuff using the internal speaker of this system. One of the biggest questions though that I'm gonna answer in my full review is, is it worth its $1,599 price point? This is one that comes in about $300 more than the LG Ultrafine display, which is also 27 inches, has a 5K resolution and a webcam built in that Apple sold for quite a few years and it wasn't officially like a first party accessory, but was one that has a lot of the similar specs to the display. But I'm gonna go ahead and spend more time with it, tell you what I think about like the actual image quality, the nano texture finish, and which one you should buy. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and unboxing of the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra. I'm so excited for it, as you can tell. I feel like it's gonna be a huge part of the workflow, and anytime I'm able to upgrade my main computer, it makes a direct impact on kind of the everyday operations and how fast we're able to put out content. So if you guys have any questions, as I said, leave them down below. I'm going to be doing like a full review, experience and everything, and if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one.